ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my co-host Teddy, and I just finished watching uh, AMD's uh, live stream from their Computex uh, press conference type thing that they just did. Um, so I just wanted to talk a bit about that and what we learned about AMD Threadripper, and then I wanted to expand and basically update you on what we now know about Intel's i9 lineup, because there's a lot going on right now. So let's start with AMD then and Threadripper. So Threadripper will have up to 16 cores and 32 threads. Now I'm 99% sure there will also be a 10 core, a 12 core and a 14 core version as well. You know, so they'll have the whole lineup, kind of like what Intel's doing now. Um, but that hasn't been confirmed, but I'm like 99% sure. Now they also haven't confirmed what the clock speeds will be, but I would imagine it's going to be similar to what we see out of Ryzen 7, so they'll probably go up to like 4 GHz or something like that, but you never know. One thing we do know is the PCIe lane, so this is something I talked about previously in my last video talking about the Intel i9 CPUs. So uh, the Intel i9s will go up to uh, 44 PCIe lanes, that's how many you'll get to use. Um, that'll be on the uh, 10 core and up, it will be uh, 44 lanes, so the whole way through. The 8 core and the 6 core i9s will only uh, be able to utilize 28, so that's not really ideal compared to Broad LE, like my 8 core 6900K can do 40. Now AMD Threadripper on the other hand, <laughs> as I just witnessed uh, watching the live stream, will give you 64 PCIe lanes, 64, and they're saying that'll be on the whole lot, um, not just on that top 16 core CPU. Wow, AMD. <laughs> That's a lot. Now, to be fair, 44 and 40 is plenty. Like, most people won't even come close to needing that much, but yeah, the simple fact alone that, um, you know, you're going to be able to go up to 64 if you want is just absolutely crazy. So good job there, AMD. Uh, that's going to make Intel probably rethink a few things, and it really needed to be done. I think uh, that really did kind of upset me with Intel, how the i9, the 6-core and 8-core i9s will only get the 28 lanes. Um, I, I thought that was a bit of a downgrade in quite a few ways. However, we'll move on. Uh, it'll be, uh, oh, I should say, they'll also be featuring 32 megabytes of L3 cache. So that's also like just a huge amount, but uh, more than all of the Intel i9s. Now, we can't tell the whole story from there because it's just the L3 cache, but that's still a colossal amount. And given that Ryzen 7 had 16, it's not really a huge surprise considering everything else has been doubled. Now it's going to be on the X399 um, platform, which is going to be interesting, make it difficult for Intel um, to come up with the next one after X299. But yeah, uh, this should be quite cool to see. Uh, we don't know much about it just yet, but they have said that there's quite a few of the uh, board partners are on board and making these uh, motherboards. So that'll be interesting to see more details about that further down the road. So let's talk quickly about Vega. They said it's going to be launching at the end of July. So again, we have to wait a bit longer. I honestly thought it would be, you know, they would be announcing it here and it would be releasing in the next two or three weeks. They said their new Frontier Edition Vega GPU will be uh, being released in about three weeks time. But that is like a, a professional grade GPU kind of for people doing uh, heavy work station type stuff. It's not really aimed at the uh, desktop market. It's aimed at the NVIDIA P100. So yeah, that's not going to be very you know useful for many of us out there. But it's good to know that they're at least putting out the first uh, Vega GPU. Uh, now they're copying what NVIDIA is doing basically. So um, I can't say I was too surprised. So let's uh, let me quickly update you about the Intel i9. Since my last video uh, it seems like they're releasing many, many more. So there's going to be, uh, as we already talked about, there's a 6-core, an 8-core, a 10-core, and a 12-core, which is what we uh, kind of expected them to release. But now there's also going to be a 14-core, a 16-core, and an 18-core i9. 
Uh, yeah, it's getting pretty crazy. Uh, it's also going to have uh, scaling L2 and L3 cache as you go up through those different CPUs, which makes sense that they do that. Um, the interesting thing is they won't be adding any extra PCIe lanes, which is kind of not that good considering what we just talked about with the MD Threadripper. So from the 10 core and up, you're just going to get 44. As I said before, that's plenty. But if you can have more, you know, why not? Why not, guys? <laughs> um, more is always better, right? So, um, yeah, but, but 44 st should still be fine. Uh, I just wish they did the whole range from the 6 core up, you know, instead of kind of nerfing that 6 core and 8 core. Um, I guess just to make people buy that 10 core to at least get the 44 lanes. So that was interesting. There is something that I was, uh, that I am quite worried about, and that is that the... Uh, the new i9s are not going to be uh, soldered down. The, um, the heat spreader will not be soldered down to the CPU die. Um, the, I don't want to make this too technical, but, but Ryzen CPUs and broad OLE CPUs are soldered down. Basically, all that means is that the heat transfer to your cooler is... Um, the heat conductivity is pretty much like 100%. All that heat is getting transferred very well over. Now, they're going to be using a, a TIM instead, or thermal interface material. That's what you find on the consumer line of, uh, or the mainstream line, I suppose you would say, uh, Intel CPUs. Um, that can be fine, as we've seen on Devil's Canyon. That had a very good thermal interface material um, to offset Haswell's terrible one. And those CPUs were quite cool. However, if it's going to be... So if it's like that, it's fine. People don't need to freak out. However, if it's, if it's like the one on KB Lake, which is not good, guys, then that's going to be a huge problem because we're going to see massive thermal issues with uh, Skylake X, which isn't going to be good. Uh, I would be very disappointed if they did that. I don't think they would, considering how much you're going to end up paying for these i9s, which we'll talk about in just a sec. But yeah, it's an interesting move there from Intel. It will be there to save money, but considering how much they're going to be charging for these CPUs, it's not ideal. And if the TIM is bad, then people are going to have to delid them. And it's like, come on, guys, we're paying so much money for these CPUs. Just, just get it right. Um, but, but I'll, I'll stay open-minded until I actually a test one. Hey, it might be really good. They might have, you know, put on a very, very good thermal interface material. So we don't know just yet. So let's talk about the pricing then. So the 6 core will be coming in at, uh, with a launch price of 389 US dollars. That uh, is by comparison to the 6800K which came in at 434 dollars at launch. So it's a little bit less there on that 6 core. The 8 core will now be priced at 599 US at launch compared to the 6900K which came in at over a thousand dollars at a thousand and eighty nine US dollars when it launched. So that's a big reduction there for the 8 core, that's that's really solid there, over $400. And the 10 core will also be quite reduced, so that'll be coming in at the $1,000 US mark, or $999. Um, uh, by comparison to the 6950X, which uh, came in at launch uh, at $1,723 US dollars. So that's an even bigger drop there, um, over $700 cheaper so so that's really good uh good to see from intel that those prices are coming down maybe not as much as a lot of people hoped but i think i'm thinking intel will uh be able to justify it by the uh, very good clock speeds they'll get out of these and hopefully that will also give very good performance so um but we'll just have to see when these actually come out but yeah the price goes up for uh, from there through the uh, Skylake X uh, CPUs as you go up the uh, flagship now, the 7980XE Extreme, so Extreme Edition, that's the 18 core, that'll be coming in at 2000 US dollars. So I imagine, um, yeah, the, the main ones people will be buying will be the 6 core, the 8 core, and the 10 core, especially people wanting those uh, PCIe lanes will probably have to go up to that 10 core. And then the 12 core and up, uh, I think they'll get very, um, there'll be certain uh, buyers that will still get them because they'll need them for some number crunching thing or, or something else. There'll be a specific scenarios where they will need it. Although with Threadripper coming, who knows? Um, but yeah, so that'll be interesting. 
but I can't see those higher ones selling particularly well. I think it'll just mainly be that six core, eight core, and 10 cores, which will be the main lot that they'll be selling quite a bit of. Now, I didn't talk about KB Lake X because uh, I don't really understand it. I, I know they're you know, there's going to be a place for it, but considering these X299 motherboards are going to be expensive, guys. Let's not kid ourselves. People already complain that Z270 is too expensive for what you get, uh, and X299 is going to be more expensive than that. So to to pair one of those KB Lake X CPUs with such an expensive motherboard, it's going to mean the whole package is going to be very expensive. So I really don't understand that. It will give you a good upgrade path. I'll give you that. I'll give Intel that much, but. Um, yeah, overall, I just really don't understand why they're doing it. Again, open mind, I will be testing all of these CPUs. I'll try test every i9 I can. But uh, yeah, we'll just have to see. And uh, overall, I'm just, there's a lot going on in the CPU market, so it's going to be really fun. And I'm going to bring you guys lots of CPU showdowns with all of these crazy CPUs if I can. So hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think of Skylake X? What do you think of AMD Threadripper? And as always, I'll see you guys next time.